Nine votes to convict. Three who didn't agree that there was enough guilt to go around. Nine jurors were convinced. Next time we'll work harder on the other three. How often do you want to come back to square one? You don't think we should retry them? Not until you can point at Eileen Willick and say, there's your murderer. Now call Brola and see what you can work out. All right, I didn't want it to come to this. I'll agree to a plea on one condition. That she agrees to a tubal legation. Been riding your motorcycle without a helmet. You want to have her sterilized? Well, I heard it was a popular procedure in Germany 50 years ago. Now, hold on. I'm not goose-stepping anybody into the operating room, first of all. Second, as long as she can have babies, this woman's killing spree is going to continue. If your crystal ball is that good, I'll tell the mayor we don't need the police anymore. How many more deaths do you need before you can predict a pattern of behavior? Five, ten, what's the magic number? Try 1942. Skinner v. Oklahoma, the Supreme Court recognized procreation as a basic right. They also thought that segregation was an idea worth protecting. Times change, perceptions change. Claire, if this was a rapist and the issue was chemical castration, we wouldn't even be having this argument. Yes, we would. Jack, once you open the door to state interference in a person's body, everyone from anti-abortionists to advocates of sterilizing the retarded will come marching through. Don't kid yourself. The state already interferes with your body. You can't legally inject heroin into your veins. You can't legally commit suicide. And the state has the right to put your body in a uniform and send you off to war. Twelve states already have compulsory sterilization laws. I'm not breaking any new ground here. It's morally repugnant. It's a medical procedure. It's morally neutral. If it's used to wipe out a race of people, it's evil. If it prevents a killer from creating new victims for herself, it serves a moral good. I know it's not the popular thing, but it may be the only thing that'll stop her. Well, it's been tried before unsuccessfully. And I don't think you're going to find a judge in a million years that'll go along with you. We're amenable to a plea bargain, but Mr. McCoy has put an incredible stipulation. Uh, that's stating it mildly. He refuses to discuss alternatives. We want him removed from the case. Your Honor, we can present expert testimony that Mrs. Willick suffers from a syndrome that compels her to murder her children. These experts haven't even examined my client. We have an affidavit from Mrs. Willick's doctor that this procedure is invasive and in most cases irreversible. That's fact, not theory. You can't let him do this to me, Your Honor. Mr. McCoy, I'm stunned that you would believe for a second that this is a precedent I would want to set. Well, I can't accept a plea bargain without it. I've weighed her rights against the rights of her next dead baby. If I were you, I'd take another look at your scales. We don't punish people for crimes they haven't committed yet. Either you accept the plea without the stipulation, or I'm going to grant the motion to remove you. And that's what you'll have to do, Your Honor. But what did you expect? Judge Leon wasn't ready to take on the Supreme Court. I'm not trying to fix the world, Claire. Roland's brief. Worth a second look. The doctor who signed the affidavit says Eileen's been his patient for the last six weeks. So? He's an obstetrician. Adam Schiff has been slow to assign a new ADA to the case. I hope it's because you've had an attack of common sense. You won't find anybody in this building willing to discuss a plea bargain with you. We talked to your doctor, Mrs. Willick. He says you're two and a half months pregnant. Eileen, how could you... You didn't know, did you, Mr. Willick? Marty, I... I was gonna tell you. This doesn't change anything. I think it does. Am I right, Mr. Willick? In a year, will you be helping this child take its first steps? Or will you be McCoy. standing over another grave? It's your decision this time, Mr. Willock. Marty, don't do this to me. A 100% 
want her to get help? It depends on you. Marty, I strongly urge you not to say another word. Eileen was standing beside Emily's crib. She was holding a little pillow we used in the stroller. She looked at me. I knew. After Caroline, I thought things would be different. why you do this. I want you to go somewhere where you can get help. Jack, man one, with a sentence recommendation. <laughs>